Hey everyone, welcome to our new video series on MySQL using Python. So now that we have covered that how to create tables uh, into MySQL using Python, so now we will let's dive into to insert rows in our tables. So let's start with our code. So first of all, we'll start with importing our library that is MySQL dot connector, and we'll give our alias name as con that we already know. Then we have to create a object for our connection to establish our connection so we'll create mycon and then we have to specify some parameters here so we will have to specify first the host so we are using the local host then we have to specify the user so our username is root then we have to specify the password that is when we create a mysql when we install mysql so we have to insert this password so that password we have to write here and then we have to mention the database so in the first video we have seen how to create a database so we have at that time we have created a database cl coding so we'll continue with that database only and then you can print mycon the object to see that your connection has been established or not so now the connection has been established successfully as you can see that we have got the connection object here at this memory location now we have to create the cursor for executing our queries so for creating a cursor we have to first create an object for that cursor and then on that object in which we have established the connection on that we have to apply the cursor method so using the dot operator so dot cursor then you have to execute the cell now the use of this cursor is that it is used to execute the queries and uh, give a relationship between the uh, mysql and the queries which you want to insert then it's time for our query so in the previous video we have already seen that how to create a table okay and how to drop a table but now uh, we have to see how we are uh, going to insert rows in a table but before that we'll again see that how we can create tables with now attributes in means adding new attributes and keys to our columns so first of all uh, those who have seen the last video so you can go and drop that staff or you can continue with that table also okay so i'll create a new table here okay because i've already deleted that table so i'll create that table only with that name staff you guys can go on with that table only or you can also drop that table that you guys already know and then you can again create that table so there was staff id so in that staff id we were only given the data type of that column int now what we are going to do we will specify an attribute that is auto increment and we want to give this attribute auto increment because after each row we are inserting that value of a staff id should automatically get uh, incremented means if we have inserted first row so the value of a staff id will be one then if you are inserting the second row then it will automatically take it as second then for third and then again and again it will automatically increment the value of staff id okay then we'll make it uh, it as a primary key okay why we are making it, it as a primary key because there should be only one uh, the, uh, this staff id should be unique so for making it unique we are making it a primary key one more thing to notice here that that in one table we can make only one column as auto increment and only one column as a primary key okay so we have given both to the staff id that it should be automatically incremented and it should be unique also in each row now then it's type for giving the second row that is for the staff name that should be in varchar data type and we'll specify the length of it as 255 which is the highest length of the varchar Then next variable we'll give which will be the staff position that at which position he or she works in that company. So again we'll give varchar for this. Then at last we'll give the staff experience. So that we want in integer format it means it should be basically in years. So that's why we are taking integer as its data type. So now we are. Uh, created our query now we'll 
execute our query. So for executing the query, you are going to use the method execute using the cursor object. So cur dot execute, and then we have to simply write our query in which uh, the variable in which we have stored the query. And let's just execute our cell. So it has been successfully executed. As you can see, there is no error. So now we'll continue uh, with the inserting. So there are several ways to insert rows in a table. Okay, so we'll see one by one each. So first of all, we are going to see the simple way that is insert single value at a time. So for that, let's create the query first. So first of all, the query is insert into table. Okay, and then you have to give the values. So let's see, first of all, insert into, then you have to write the table name in which you want to insert. Then you have to give all the column names, means all the variables which you have created in that table. So staff name, staff position, then there is a staff experience. Now you guys, you guys will ask that I have not mentioned a staff ID. So why that I have not mentioned it, I'll explain it after this query get executed. So now at first place, as we can see, we have taken the staff name. So in the values, now we will write the staff name first. So let's say if the person name is Now for separating each value with another, we are going to use the comma. Now the second variable was for the staff position. So we will give John as he is a manager. So let's give the position as manager. And then the last one is the experience. So we'll give the experience as he has the experience of six years. So we'll mention six. Now we have to execute the query. Okay, so when we have executed the cell, so you can see that total record inserted is one. So now our record has been inserted successfully. Now we have to check it. So for checking, you can go to your MySQL. Then you can run this query that select asterisk from staff. And when you run it, you can see you have got the table with the staff ID, staff name, staff position and staff experience. And staff ID, you can see that automatically one has been inserted. Then in staff name, John, staff position manager, and then staff experience six. So that is the thing when you have uh, make a variable auto increment. So you don't need to mention that variable and you don't need to give the uh, values for that explicitly. It will automatically take the value. Okay. So that is. Now let's do what this was the first way. To insert a variable means single variable at a single time. Now, if you have to insert multiple variables together, so then for that the query is now in the values what you have to give in the values you will mention a percent 
s it means that you are going to insert a value okay at these places now suppose if you have to insert two values together so then what we can do we can create a list and inside that list we'll create multiple tuples so each tuple will represent a value for one person means one staff so let's say in our case and suppose he is a developer and then year that how many uh, years experience he has then for different person means for different staff you have to again create a different tuple for it okay and he has experience of 3 years now in the execute uh, we have to because we are executing two values together so now we will use a new method that is execute many in this execute many we are giving the first parameter is query and the second one will specify our list so our list is ml so we'll specify ml here then mycon.commit this commit method is used to successfully see that our value should get inserted in our table and then we are uh, fetching the row count that how many rows should get inserted so let's execute our code so now you can see total record is two means two values got inserted now now again if you want to check you can go to your mysql and then you can check there so now you will check the staff id is has been added with two and three and with the person names values okay so this is how you can insert multiple values now the next inserting method is uh, suppose if you want to insert values dynamically means at the runtime you want to insert values means give uh, values for your staff name staff position and staff experience so for that what you can do first of all you have to create three objects for that staff name and you have to take inputs for them then you can prompt a message also if you want Now, one more thing to notice here that uh, the staff experience, the variable for that we have inserted is int. So now we have to take input in integer format only. And here, the most uh, benefit of uh, inserting the values dynamically is that you can specify that what values you want to take from the user. So as you can see, I want the staff experience in years format. So I can easily uh, mention here in my prompt message that give the experience in years format. So any person would give it in year only. Now in the values, when we are inserting it dynamically, uh, again we have to just specify with percent or any character so that it will take, means it means that we have to put values at these places. Now this time we will use the execute method only. We will specify first our query and then we will take a tuple. And in that tuple, we'll specify all these three objects which we have created, which in which we are taking the values. So staff name is there. Then there is staff position. 
and then a staff experience. Now we'll use the commit method so that QD get committed successfully and ensures that it has been inserted in our table and then we'll print the total record inserted. Let's execute the cell. So enter a staff name, it is asking. So let's suppose we are giving Suraj Gupta. Then it is asking for the staff position or you can see how it specifies that it is the job role that is it's asking for. So we can give it as a UI developer. Now at last it's asking for the entire staff experience in years. It is clearly mentioned. So let's suppose if you are giving four, now at last, because we are printing the row counts, you can see total record one, means one record has been added. So now let's just check it. So as you can see, when I've updated the query in MySQL workbench, so you can see the last value with the staff ID four, Suraj Gupta, UI developer, and staff experience is four. So it means that our code has been successfully executed and it has been inserted it on sale. Now at the last we have to close the cursor and then the connection also we have to close the connection also so that we do not get any misvelevious behavior. So this is how three ways that in which we can insert rows in our table. The first one is for inserting single values at a time. The second query is for inserting multiple values. Uh, by using list and then the third one is inserting dynamically okay so i hope you like this video thanks for watching the video we'll see you in the next video